everybody. Welcome to another episode of Larry C's Attacking Handbook. And we're going to start today with, we're focusing on demolishing, tearing apart the enemy king position with whatever available tools we have. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the double bishop sack, various forms of it, and uh, other sacrifice, other uh, seems similar to that. Basically, you, with a bishop, double bishop sack, you're opening up the enemy king to exposure, to checks, to assault by the major pieces, the queen, typically a queen and rook. That is a very, very basic example. Uh, late I am Imre Karnig White, his opponent, Mr. Korn, wor workup Korn. And here's how Korn gets popped. Double bishop sack. Now this is the kind of, if you don't sack here, uh, well, you know, you don't deserve to win. Um, so this is a very obvious case. White has the rooks available to lift. And so here we go. This is a not very, very basic example. Boom. Takes. Forced. Here comes the queen. And here's the double bishop sack to further open up the king. King takes. And now we can lift the rook. One white is slightly handicapped by the presence of the pawn here on h3, which uh, removes the possibility of rook h3 to assault the king. But here white has so much activity, it doesn't matter. He's already got another rook ready to go. So here white is threatening quick mate with rook g3 check. The main thing you'd have to analyze here is what would happen if he moves the rook. Well, because of the bishop, there's no escape. Or I guess you could also say, what happens if he plays queen c7 to chop on g3? Well, white, what does white do then? Well, he's got a nice little deflection sacrifice, rook d7 to get the job done. Of course, queen takes d7, we got our mate. And if he plays queen f4, white will check. And now he's double attack to get his material back with inter big interest and black has a hopeless position. Okay, let's move on here to another fairly basic example. This is a uh, former, I mean, this is the uh, San Francisco Chronicle columnist and blindfold specialist and uh, recontour writer and I am and notable chess organizer as well. This is George Kowalski White, his opponent, the Mr. Marcel Defos, and here again we have the bishops poised to, on the enemy king. You have to always examine these forcing moves. Rooks are available as well. How did Colty take him down? Yes, takes, check, boom, bishop takes f6. He takes, and here we play, now the availability of rook d4 is very important. He slides the king over to h8 forced, and now he li lifts the rook with rook d4, threatening mate. If f6, white wins routinely with the check. And he'll pick off that bishop after a little check and have an overwhelming position. And that leaves the only conceivable defense for black is the pathetic bishop f5, but after queen takes f5, it's all basically all over. F6, check. Very easy to calculate here. How does white win? There are a million ways. Queen h5, threatening check and check. And if he brings the queen over for defensive purposes, he gets pinned. Nice little example from old Colty. Now we're going to come to some somewhat more uh, advanced examples of this very, very important tactical device. And this is a nice one from Soviet Championship, I believe, from this played in the 70s, Kuzmin White, Sveshnikov Black, uh, Sveshnikov, particularly famous player, author of the uh, Sveshnikov Sicilian, and a lot of good game, nice attacking games, but here, Evgeny is on the receiving end of an attack, blistering attack,